Okay, uh, in this video clip, I am going to show you how you start a consolidation test. Before you start the consolidation test, this is an incremental consolidation. What we're gonna do first is uh, we're gonna find out or determine the machine deformation or the frame deformation. Some people call it also the compressibility of the system. Because when we apply the loads, which translate into stresses on our soil sample, not only the soil is gonna deform, but the frame does deform. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at how much the frame deforms, and, we're gonna, and the software will automatically correct by sub, subtracting the machine deformation from the soil deformation, so you get the net deformation of the soil. Uh, so in order to do that, instead of soil, we're gonna use a metal disc. It's called a calibration disc. So we put the disc here. Okay, uh, so you, you're gonna simulate everything as if you're running a uh, consolidation or soil sample. So you got a filter paper, one at the bottom. You got the soil, which is now a a piece of metal, which is a calibration um, disc. You put you put the uh, the filter. The filter paper also compresses, and then you get the. This is the holding ring here, or centering ring, and then uh, you have the top pour stone and loading pad. So you set up everything here as if you were going to run a consolidation test. Okay, what, what I just did here is I put my uh, consolidation cell, I center it, there is actually a rings here. To give you an idea, the rings are the typical size of soil, 1.4, 2 inch, 2.5, 2.8, and 4 inch. Um, so, you center it here, you get as close as possible to the load cell button, so you know that this is moving here. And um, everything is good to go here. The menu here, you can leave it anywhere except jog, don't leave it in jog. So this is the menu here. What I did, I moved it slowly, just to be close. So there is actually a, uh, a gap between the steel ball and the, the load button here. Um, if you have a piece of paper, you can see that you can slide in and out pretty easily. Um, I'm actually gonna fold this piece of paper in two, and I can see that I can go, so there is a gap here. Now, why I'm leaving the gap? Because the software automatically closes the gap for you automatically. Um, so what we're gonna do next now is everything is gonna be uh, controlled through the computer, all right? The next, uh, the next step, what, what we did here is we set up our uh, consolidation cell with the calibration uh, disk inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load the software and we're gonna run the software to do the machine deformation. How, many, how often do you do machine deformation? Once. It's not gonna change because the frame is not gonna change. Unless you're changing something like a new cell or different size sample, 2.5 inch, or something like that, that you might wanna do it. But typically, you only do it once. And because you only have one frame now, no. uh, then you have the file that correspond to that has the machine deformation. So what I will do here is I am going to go to the software that is called Consolidation. I double click on it and uh, the software is loaded. That's the one we're gonna be talking about tomorrow. Now when the software is loaded, it's blank. There's nothing there. 
what you need to do is you need to load the template file which created. The template file has all specific information to that particular load frame. What I mean by specific the information is the calibration factors of the sensors connected to that frame and also things like step multiplier, properties of the motor that is used. All this information does not change. You don't want to re-enter all the information every time. So what you do, you load the template file. You must load a template file before you run your test. So this is blank. I'm going to load a template file. I go to file and then load. And there's a template file that we created here for you. Now, once I load the file, it's going to give me some information that was in the template file that you need to update, such as the date, the sample information, the, uh, the tester, the checker, things that change all the time. So you need to update that. Now, if you forget to update anything now, you can update it after the test or during the test. However, I do not recommend you do that. Because once you start in a production mode for a big project like 50 tests, and you forgot to update, it will become a mess. Steve is laughing about that. He probably knows something about it. Um, so I, I am just going to update right now just to show you the date of the test, which is 03-25-2008. Okay, I am the tester and I'm my own checker too. All right, nobody's checking my work right now. Um, so I have that. Now, there's a logic here which I'm gonna go into the details tomorrow when I talk about the software interface. Now I'm gonna go a little faster than usual so I can do my machine deformation and get my test running. But tomorrow I'll concentrate more on very specific each step along the way and the logic behind it. So I have a specimen. Now my specimen diameter is the inside diameter of the ring, which I should have measured before putting it there. I'm assuming it's 2.875. So we have the initial diameter 2.8. The height is one inch. We don't, we don't need to put the sample initial weight. Uh, that's irrelevant now, or the specific gravity or anything like that. What we're interested now here is doing the machine deformation. So I am going to jump directly to what is called calibrate machine. Now, uh, this is, uh, I'm going to put the stresses in TSF. Now, what I need to do is put the stresses that I am actually going to apply when I run my actual consolidation test. Where do stresses come from? Does the ASTM has a recommendation for that? So it starts with a 1.8 of a TSF, 0.25. Then you double the stress, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and you unload it 8, 2, uh, 0.5, and 0.125. So I have my stresses. I put my stresses there. It, what we call them target stress. So I, have, I put my sequence, load, and unload. Now, those are the stresses, just a target stress. When I run a test and the stresses are different, the software automatically interpolates between the lines. So you don't have to worry about that. You only do it once. So if I'm running a test and I'm running it at 0.2, uh, 0.2 TSF, and here there is 0.1 and 0.25, then it will find the value in between doing linear interpolation. So I have my stresses here. I go into view system, make sure everything is okay here. Uh, one quick test which I'm gonna be doing tomorrow and checking, I wanna make sure that everything is working uh, correctly. So I went to a system monitor just to check 
that there is a communication, the power is on, limit switches are off, and the sensors are alive and responding. One quick test I always tell people to do is the load. What I do here, I, I push on load cell, and I should see about 20 pounds. That's what a normal human being who is not on steroids <laughs> will push about 20 pounds. So that's a quick, easy test. All right, we're back to do our machine deformation. Uh, something that was not recorded, <laughs> we were checking the calibration, make sure that we're good to go. So what we did is we checked the load cell calibration and the displacement calibration. Those are very important because they're going to give us the correct results for the machine deformation, especially the load cell. So what we did, we took the load cell out of the frame, put it on the counter, and we put a known dead weight, which was about 17 pounds, and we checked it, it was about 17 pounds. So that looks good, we checked the calibration. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to what is called the machine calibration that has a sequence of stresses that I have put in according to the STM standard and according to most probably the stresses that you're gonna be using for doing your consolidation test. So what I will do, I'll go on the first step here and I click on step. When I click on step, I get a prompt on the screen telling me position platen. Remember, we have a gap here. So position platen is gonna move automatically and it closes the gap. So you always say yes, unless when you set it, you know exactly that is touching. So you do yes, and when you do yes, you're gonna see that light on the motor up. It's gonna go up, 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 and then when it, when it touches about quarter pound, it will stop. So I'm gonna click yes, and it's gonna go up. And now, it, it touched it, and then it went down. Now it's maintaining a very, very small, and very small load, so it's barely touching here. So now all the results are gonna start right from zero, from, uh, and it's maintaining that load. Now, just to show you that is a feedback is coming from load cell, is a feedback, is a, what is called closed loop control. If I push down, I'm gonna create negative pressure. If I push down, and the motor is gonna respond, goes up. And if I push up, it's gonna go down. Look at this, I'm gonna push down on it, So it's trying to keep that contact constant, no matter what. Okay? And then it goes back to normal. So now automatically made the contact. Now if I feel, yeah, it looks good, make sure it's all contact, I say yes. It's press OK when ready, cancel to board. So I'm gonna press OK. Now what it's gonna do is gonna apply the first load. The first stress, first load to correspond to my target stress. I can close these, I don't need that. Now, I go, when it's quiet, I go to the next step. And I can check the graph, it only has one point here. And I do step when it's quiet. Now I got two points. I wait. This is metal, it's not consolidating. It's just applying and maintaining the load. So I give it a few seconds. Step. Now, because it's very, very stiff material, there's no give, so it will go up and down to 
this is not a soil. If I wanted to slow it down, I can. There is some controls here, it's called PID control. But there is no need to change things on. Just let it, it will stabilize by itself. 